In this video, we're going to talk about uncertainty and then how we deal with uncertainty, and that's by using significant figures. So the reason that we have uncertainty is because that last digit in a measurement is the one that we estimate. So there's always some uncertainty with it. But many of the digits do represent certainty, just that last one doesn't. And so what we use are significant figures, and they're used to tell us how much certainty there is in a given number or a calculated amount. And what they do is they are based on the fact that some numbers are used as placeholders, which kind of tell us about the size of the measurement, but not how certain it is. So let's look at the rules for significant figures, how you figure out whether a number is uh, digits in a number are significant or not. First of all, all non-zero digits are significant. Everybody seems to get that rule, no problem. The second rule is zeros that are sandwiched between significant figures are significant. So anytime you have a zero that is between two significant figures, that will be counted as a sig fig. And then the third rule says that zeros are significant only if they follow a decimal point and a non-zero digit. And it doesn't matter whether the non-zero digit or the decimal point comes first. It has to be after both of those. Think about being the line leader in kindergarten. You know, that was kind of a big job that everybody wanted. The line leader was the leader. Everybody else in the class followed. So every number, every zero that comes after a decimal and a non-zero digit is also significant. So let's try a few practice problems. When I put these up, pause the video, give it a shot, and then look at the answer and I'll explain. And if you, there's something you don't understand, feel free to ask me about it in class. So what I want you to do is tell me how many sig figs each of the following numbers has. Pause the video and give it a try. Now let's look at the answer. Three sig figs. So rule number one says that all non-zero digits are significant. And as you can see, this number has one, two, three non-zero digits. Let's try another one. Remember to pause after I put it up and give it a try. So for this one, it actually has two sig figs. That zero is after a non-zero digit, but it's not after a decimal point, and it's not between two significant figures. So that zero is not significant. It's just a placeholder. It tells you about the size of the number, that that's 720, not 72. Try this one. Remember to pause and try it. So this one has three sig figs. You can see that the zero is between two significant digits, and so the zero is sandwiched. That's, that makes that significant. Now try this one. For this one, the answer is four, and sometimes people get confused. They see that seven and two are significant, so that's the first and second one. This one we're not sure about, so let's look at this last one. This zero is after a non-zero digit and a decimal point, which puts this zero in the sandwich, making that have four sig figs. Let's try another round of practice problems. So again, tell me how many sig figs each of the following numbers has. Remember to pause the video and take a, a practice run at it. The first number has four, and you can see that all of those are non-zero digits. That should be pretty straightforward. Try another. This number also has four sig figs. You can see that this zero is in the sandwich, and so you automatically make that one a sig fig. It's between two non-zero digits. Here's another one. This one has five. Remember that any zeros that are in the sandwich between two non-zero digits will count as significant digits, so there are five in that one. This one has four also. Remember that the two non-zero digits are significant, and then these two zeros both follow a non-zero digit and a decimal point. Remember the line leader in kindergarten? How about this one? 
This one has one sig fig. The zeros are after a non-zero digit, but not a decimal point. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about placeholders. That tells us that that is 600, but the only certain digit is the 6. Let's try this one. Hopefully you got that that one had three sig figs. That zero is in between the 6 and the 1, so it's in the sandwich. Try this one. This one's a little more tricky. It has four. You can see that it has a non-zero digit. These two we're not sure about, but this zero is after a non-zero digit and a decimal point. They don't have to be together, which puts these two in the sandwich and makes them all significant. How about another one? This one has two sig figs. These zeros are after a decimal point, but there's not a non-zero digit in front of them. Those are, again, placeholder zeros not significant figures. Try this one. Now I'm just messing with you. So this one you should have gotten had six sig figs. The one and the two are significant. The five is significant, so that makes these two zeros significant. And then you have this final zero, which is after a non-zero digit and a decimal. None of these leading zeros are significant. Again, those are just placeholders. All right, let's talk about what happens when we use numbers with sig figs in calculations. Um, think about if you plan a big party or maybe a wedding, you have to think about what affects how much food you serve. So it's the number of people and then how it's served, if it's in a buffet or if it's plated, somebody brings you an actual plate of food. And then, um, who's coming because you don't always know who's going to come. Sometimes people don't respond to your invitation, unfortunately. So in a buffet, where would the uncertainty be? If you think about it, you don't always know how much people will eat. If you have like a big bunch of burly guys and they come through and really load up their plates two or three times, that's going to affect the amount of food that you need to serve. And if you have waiter service where they're bringing in the plates, the, where is the uncertainty? You'd have to think about uh, how many people are coming because it's that number of plates. They're bringing you a plate with a preset amount of food. And so that's where it comes from. And that calculation depends on the least certain number. Do we know how many people are coming? Do we know how much they'll eat? So it's the same type of thing when we're talking about calculations. So the least certain number in a calculation it limits the amount of certainty we can have in our answer. And so in order to take care of that, we have to round our answers to the lowest number of sig things in a problem. So let's look at how we would work an example. Go ahead and make sure that you write this in your notes so that you'll have one to look at if you have a question when you're doing your work in class. So for this one it says, what is the volume of a cube with 1.25 centimeter sides? Hopefully at this point you guys remember that uh, the volume of a cube is length times width times height, and with a cube, we know that those are all the same, so it would be the same as side cubed. So volume is going to be 1.25 centimeters. Don't forget your unit here. And then we're going to cube that. And if you push that into your, go ahead and push that into your calculator. When you get the number on your calculator, that whole answer from your calculator that's going to be 1.953125 so what we want to do is we want to pay attention to how many sig figs are in our problem if you look there are 1 2 3 and so we want to count over 1 2 3 and then we want to use this next digit, that's our, where we're going to end. We need to decide if we need to round it up or leave it the same. So since it's a 3, we're going to just leave it where it is. So that's going to be 1.25. And then that, the 1.25 is cubed, but the centimeter is also cubed, and that's your unit. 1.25 centimeters cubed. All right, let's try another example. Let's look at the volume of a rectangular prism that has these side lengths. 
So hopefully you remember from the last problem that the volume is equal to length times width times height. So we're going to go ahead and substitute those in. We've got 11.0 centimeters times 5.5 .5 centimeters times 112 centimeters. Go ahead and plug that into your calculator and see what you get. See if you can figure out the correct number of sig figs so that when you are uh, doing the answer to the problem, you'll compare it to mine. So when I punched it into my calculator, the whole number here that I got was 6776 centimeters cubed. When we look at our problem, that's three sig figs in this number, two sig figs in this number, and three here. So we want to choose the fewest sig figs, which is two. So what we're going to do, we're going to use this and this, and then we're going to decide whether to round using the next number. Since that's a seven, that's going to round up. So our volume is going to be 6,800 centimeters cubed. All right, try these problems. Let's pause the video and work the problems. Try to give the answer with the correct number of sig figs. I know there are not units on these. These are just quick practice problems. Start the video and then I'll give you the answers. So in this one, I'm first giving you the whole number and then I'm giving you the number with the correct number of sig figs. Here's another sample problem. With the four, it doesn't round the seven up. It just stays the same. Here's another one. Now this one you might have gotten a little tricked by. Remember the three on the bottom only has one sig fig, so we have to round that to one digit. And then this last one. Again, one sig fig here, so you would have to round that to 80 to get the correct answer.